ladies and gentlemen, to episode number 26 of Let's Go Racing with David Starr. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. Coming up on today's show, we're going to be joined by Willie T. Ribs, who's taking part in the new SRX series with Tony Stewart and Ray Everingham. We'll get insights on that. Also talk to Willie about the month of May as we wrap up our championship May series, get to know Willie and more. Plus, we'll have our news and notes segment and our Ask David segment at the end of the show as well. Joining us as always, David Starr, back from a trip to Austin at, at the Circuit of the Americas. David, how we doing? How was Austin? Man, I'm doing great. And Austin was, uh, it was pretty awesome. The racetrack was incredible. Uh, Got to see a lot of great race fans I hadn't seen in a while, a lot of great people. And uh, I'll tell you what, for the, the conditions, the weather conditions, it was uh, it was uh, two days worth of great race as far as I'm concerned. The truck race was incredible. I thought the Xfinity race was a good race. Kyle Busch kind of stunk up the field. And uh, and then Sunday's race was very interesting, but uh, but it uh, turned out good, you know. So it was, a, it was a great weekend, and I was just so enthused of how many people – came to the event you know i hadn't seen that many people at a nascar race in a long time so uh it was pretty awesome that sounds like it and a reminder as always that the folks at whataburger cook up 100 percent pure beef burgers 24 hours a day you can get your burger burger fix anytime day or night at whataburger proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day what a burger. Dominic Oregon from the racing experts.com is here as well. Dom, how we doing? Doing great, Tyler. Can't believe we're capping off championship May month here. These things just fly so fast. We were talking before the beginning of the show. Holy cow. Episode 26. There's 52 weeks in a year. Guys, we've been doing this gig now half a year. Doesn't feel like it. It's flown by. We're having a lot of fun here on Let's Go Racing each and every week, and we appreciate the folks out there that have been tuning in, listening to us. As always, you can subscribe to the show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube, and we certainly appreciate those five-star reviews and likes as well. David, I know that you didn't get to race this weekend. Boris said was in your seat. Tell us about your role, what you did there with the MBM Motorsports crew out there in Austin and also still working with Whataburger as well. Man, you know, it's kind of interesting. For the first time in my 24-year career, I've never stepped out of a race car for any race, you know, and uh, under the circumstances of our engine blowing up or breaking at Dover and and, uh, and then NASCAR allowing the cup drivers to, to race in the Xfinity Series there in Austin, having practice, having qualifying, I mean, there were like, 45 cars showing up and uh that being said they cut the field from 40 uh entries uh to 36 and man you know i'm not you know my road racing skills aren't the best and looking at the weather man i talked to carl and he said hey man you make the call i just felt like under the circumstances of being in the backyard of whataburger and the Whataburger folks being there and them having some really beautiful looking signings around the racetrack. It was cool seeing the Whataburger in different parts of on, on the racetrack. Uh, that it was uh, in my best interest for our team and our sponsors if we put a road racing ace in there, you know. And, uh, you know, I couldn't think of anybody, you know, better to put in there than Boris said. You know, when Carl said, what do you think? I said, man, let's let's give him a call. And uh, it all worked out. And, uh, man, it was, not, it was fun to – to talk to him and, and listen to him uh, explain to the crew chief what was going on with the race car and and listen to his stories and how he's ran the racetrack before. And, uh, and to spend time with a lot of my partners. I had a lot of other partners that uh, that help us that were there. And, uh, man, I was just – I was busy working, but a different type of work, you know. And uh, I can assure you that being there, not being in the race car, that, dude, that – Man, I, that was sickening. That was a sickening feeling. You know, it was like there was a knife stuck in me. You know what I mean? But it was the right thing to do. So, uh, wasn't a bad weekend. And I'm looking forward to getting back into race car this weekend in Charlotte. Well, before we bring in Willie, David, tell us about your background with Willie, where you guys go back and your relationship of sorts. Well, man, as a kid growing up, you know, I, I always, you know, I was a big fan of uh, IndyCar racing. Growing up in Houston, Texas, uh, you know, allies and A.J. Foyt, uh, you know, and being around Tony Bittenhausen Jr., he used to spend the night at my house when I was a young kid uh, through my dad's association with Tony Bittenhausen Jr. And just, uh, 
you know, just loving any kind of racing as a little boy growing up. But I would watch Trans Am racing. You watch IndyCar racing. You always heard this cool dude, Willie T. Ribs. You know what I mean? That was just a cool name, you know. And not only was his name cool, he was one hell of a race car driver. I mean, I seen him racing in Dallas, Texas. You know, I came up here. I live here now. But I saw him race at times. And, and when I seen, seen him race in the Trans Am series, he was winning. And I remember back in 1990, 91, uh, might have been 89, I don't remember what year it was, uh, you know, uh, he made the Indianapolis 500, and it was a big deal on television. And I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a big deal because he was the first black man to qualify. And I thought that was interesting. You know, that's, that's a big deal. But it was kind of interesting that Willie was the first black man to race in the Indianapolis 500. Well, you fast forward about – I don't know, 10 years, 11 years from that point. And here I am racing against him in the NASCAR Camping World, Camping World Truck Series. And he was driving for the, the late, great Bobby Hamilton. But, man, one thing about Willie, he's such a cool dude and a great race car driver. I was just looking up some of his stats. You know, you're talking about Trans Am racing, IndyCar racing, AMSA racing, NASCAR Cup Series, NASCAR Truck Series. I mean, this guy... That, that says it all about him. And then some of the people that helped him, you know, Don King, uh, Dan Gurney, Jack Rouse, I think Roger Penske. I mean, just a, just a cool dude, you know. And, you know, when I'm thinking about sitting here thinking about Willie, I remember back in 1989, 90, whatever year that was, that he was the first black man to make the Indianapolis 500. When I first met Willie T. Ribs, he was one of the coolest race car drivers I ever met. He was one of the best, and I never even considered him being black. You know what I mean? He was just a cool dude, you know? So, uh, I, I uh, man, I just uh, – I thought it was just cool to be able to race with somebody I watched on TV for a long time and always heard his name. But what a great guy and what an exceptional talent behind any type of steering wheel in any kind of race car. Pretty cool dude. Yeah, certainly. And uh, Dominic, uh, as our historian around here, run us through. I know David touched on some of those things that uh, Willie's been a part of uh, over the years. Yeah, so Willie's got to do a little bit of everything behind the wheel when, you, when we're talking on a professional level, from IMSA to USAC to the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, full-time in the Truck Series for Bobby Hamilton in 2001, as well as testing some Formula One cars in 1976. Willie... Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Let's Go Racing with David Starr. We look forward to, to picking your brain and just learn a little bit more about your story by the end of this podcast. Thank you, gentlemen, for that lovely introduction. <laughs> <clears throat> My brain has been picked so much. Uh, I feel like uh, a carcass on the side of a highway. <laughs> Where the, <laughs> not only did the coyotes get me, but the buzzers got me, too. But uh, no, thank you again, David, for, uh, and it was great. I mean, I don't think we'd be talking right now if we hadn't seen each other at Coda last weekend in Austin. And it was 20 years ago. The last time we saw each other was 20 years ago, 2001. And I got to tell you, man, you don't age one bit. And, and I'm not, you know, and I'm not soaping you down. Right. Uh, I don't soap down, right? right? I might soap a horse, but I'm not soaping anything else, right? <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I couldn't believe when I saw you. Yeah, you hardly gained any weight. Face looks the same. I, I even, I, I, you, you need to sell, uh, sell it like horses <laughs> sell it, right? Hey, yeah. man, I'm, I'm just trying to be like Willie, buddy. I'm just trying to keep racing. And uh, man, I, you know, I uh, haven't raced all the different types of race cars you are, but I, I was fortunate to be able to race against you. I watched you forever, and man, it was so cool to run into you. Uh, I mean, your name, I hear conversations about Willie T. Ribs all the time over the years. Even, I mean, you raced back with us in 2001 at NASCAR. I know you did a lot of NASCAR stuff in your career, but when I raced against you, like you said, 20 years ago, and after, I don't know if you want to say retired, because I don't think you ever officially retired from that, from any type of racing. But after you step out of the NASCAR side of it, I didn't see you for a long time. But, man, I, I, I always heard your name. People talk about you all the time, whether it's IndyCar racing, NASCAR racing, 
other things. You're a very popular dude in the in the in the world of professional auto racing. You know, that's all I can say. Well, with the film Uppity uh, came out a year ago. Uppity, the Willie T. Rip story, and it was a documentary that Adam Carolla created and uh, Nate Adams, and it was so successful. I mean, successful worldwide. We were number eight of Netflix top 20 films for 2020. We're number eight. Now, Netflix got a lot of films. Yeah, right? yeah they do. Yeah. We were number eight. As a matter of fact, there was only two sports films in the top 20, and it was Last Dance, the Michael Jordan gig. Well, yeah. They finished seventh. He, wow. Michael Jordan beat me by one. Now, normally he beats guys by three, right? Yeah. He rolls back <laughs> and does a three-pointer, you know, and then sticks his tongue out, you know, right? You know, and, uh, it, you know, it's got a purple Kool-Aid stripe on it, you know. So uh, he beat us by one. He finished seventh. We finished eighth. But they spent between 10 and 20 million on their project, and ours wasn't even half a million. But the characters that were in it, I mean, it was, you know, that, he was involved in a team sport. What Willie T. Ribs did was blaze a historical trail in auto racing and Netflix, and it was captured. And, and it really wasn't about racing. It was, it was what it, the, the character involved to deal with everything that happened and people everyone that's seen it has cried i mean uh, uh damon hill who's world champion formula one driver he he uh texts me from australia and said he saw it on the plane on british airways going to australia from england and he said he, he says man he said i never cried before <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, like that. But it was, uh, and, and the biggest response not was from people who never even watched racing. That was the biggest response. Kids, young kids, uh, millennials said to me, texts and left messages saying, I have no reason to fail. Hmm. Now that I've seen what I've seen, I have no reason to fail. So, you know, that I, I, from that standpoint, I think, to me, that's successful. Absolutely. And I, I just I want to say, uh, you know, uppity, when I was on an airplane as well, I was on American Airlines flight, and I believe I was headed up to New York, Washington Glen, somewhere. And uh, I was looking through the different, they had all kinds of shows on there. And, you know, I uppity, Willie T. Ribs, and I'm racing, and I'm like, oh, my God. And, man, I, it was – Man, it's so it's it's uh, man. I cried like a baby too, and I was almost embarrassed because I had two people sitting on each side of me. But man, I had tears running down my eyes. You know, I said, "Man, I know this guy." You know, but I didn't know, you know, nobody that I know in any forms of racing had to go through what you had to go through in the, you know, and and. You know, it, it's challenge for anybody. I don't care. I don't care what color your skin is, but man, to see what you did and and and, and the character you had and the drive and the and, and the dedication you had, you wasn't gonna let any of that stop you. And man, it was just uh, and man, you know the coolest thing. I I lift my head up to wipe my tears off one time, and you can see everybody's screens and every other. All the screens, I think I've seen two or three different screens. They were watching the same freaking movie I was watching. So that movie has touched a lot of people. And I love hearing you tell us that the kids text you and respond to you and say, hey, man, we have no, you know, we if, if Willie can do it, we can do it. You know what I mean? It's just it's passion, it's desire. It's the dedication to want to win and, and the love for something. But, man. I don't think any of us uh, that race today uh, had, you know, none of us had to fight the, uh, I don't even know what you call it, to get where you gotten, you know what I mean? It well, was just, you know, yeah. uh, 
uh, a lot of people and racing is difficult for everyone uh, who, you know, unless, you know, and some it's easier than others. Some have the name and the brand at, at an early age and it makes that uh, uh, trail a, a lot easier. But their skin color didn't make it harder. It's already hard enough, but you're, I tell you, tell them your color didn't make it e even harder, okay? It was a little bit harder for me. It's, it was already hard, but it was harder uh, being a pioneer and being uh, a trailblazer based on uh, my race. And, but you know, I gotta tell you, it was fun as shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Uh, I would do it, I would do it over again uh, uh, ten times, just the way it happened. Absolutely, it was, man. It was the obstacles that really let you know what you're made of. It, it, you you don't know what you're made of until you run in to obstacles and you get beat down and you get and you get up and and you and you beat them back and. Uh, in, in hindsight, it, it, was, it was kind of fun. Well, you tell some people that, and they say, well, oh, you're kind of crazy. <laughs> you know, yeah. Willie, what I think about, it just goes back to raw talent. You know what I mean? And, and man, when, you know, hearing you get kicked off the horse, as you want to call it that, and, man, you get right back up and jump on that horse, and you take that horse to the front and win. You know what I mean? It's like, man, it's just, it was a freaking beautiful thing. And I didn't – I. You know, uppity and hearing the story and what y'all went through at Indy and qualify for that race, man, uh, man, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, wow, it was just, uh, it was unbelievable, you know. And it just sounds like your whole racing career, when they kicked you off that horse, you fell off that horse, you got back on it, and nothing was going to stop you. And and I think it just goes back to, you know, just who you are as a person and. And you were damn good, man. You won races, and uh, they couldn't keep. Uh, well, I somebody. just didn't know how to quit, Dave. I, I think when if a person doesn't really know how to quit, then then it's easy to keep going. And um, I, you know, first of all, I would have had to deal with my grandpa. He that wouldn't have flown with him. You, you, <laughs> just, you just don't, right? And you know that. But I was lucky because people kept coming into my life, right? For at first it was Jim Truman who owned Red Roof Fins. Then it was Paul Newman. And then wow. it was Dan Gurney. And then Bill Cosby called me. All these, I didn't go looking for them. I got the phone calls out of nowhere. And what are you doing? Well, this is what I'm doing. Where do you want to go? This is where I want to go. And everybody that's made it to the top, super successful people like that, they know how difficult it is and they respect someone that, that never quits. They can respect it. And, it, you know, I just kept like a hand pulling you up the ladder, you know, one, then another. And then by the time I got the Indy 500, now this year uh, is the 30th anniversary my wife and I go back to Indy on Thursday. As a matter of fact, Matt Yoakum will be here tomorrow. Wow. Yoakum's coming with CBS. We're going to do up cl close and personal here. Uh, we're going to go out to the ranch. And Theo's going to teach Matt Yoakum how to hit clay targets with a shotgun. Because my son <laughs> Theo is one of the top shooters in the world. And uh, wow. in fact, he's on his way back to New Jersey right now from a competition. So... Um, uh, he's going to be here. We're going to do a gig all day tomorrow. Then my wife and I fly to Indy on Thursday. We're having a, a 30th anniversary, uh, party and celebration at the Columbia club at monument circle in Indy. And there's going to be a lot of people that would be there for that That's drivers. Awesome. RP might even be there for that. Awesome. Wow. Well, let me let me let me just say one more thing, and and, and, and we'll let Dominic and, and, and uh, Tyler say something. But I, I want to say one thing, just because, man, I, I just love hearing your story, hear you talk. But man, you said Paul Newman, Don King, you know, Dan Gurney, Muhammad uh, Ali, Bill Muhammad, Cosby. Bill, I mean, you go down the list. 
Yeah, but I, I want to say this: knowing you like knowing you like I know and you know and, and watching Uppity and just seeing all your accomplishments and all the different teams you drove for, I want to say I don't. That wasn't luck. Those guys wanted to get behind a winner, and they saw somebody that had a does a lot of desire and no quit in them. And those phone calls came because they wanted to be part of something that was special. And I don't call that luck. I, I call I call that you created those opportunities. Bro, I had a secret. I had a secret solution, gentlemen. All right, All right. give it to nobody, us. Nobody, nobody knew about it. When we when I met them for the first time, they'd want to go to lunch. So I put them in the car, and I drive so fast. <laughs> <laughs> they were screaming, okay, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, please, slow it down. That was, that was my trick. <laughs> I like that, I like that. I like that too. Uh, <laughs> Willie, take us back a bit. Where did it all start for you in your journey to where you're at now? Well, I mean, my, my family, I was lucky. My family had a, a successful company that my grandfather founded in 1927. And my dad and uncle, my grandfather left the business early. He retired when he was 60 and, you know, did real well, bought a 300 acre ranch and moved out uh, out of San Jose because it all started in San Jose. Well, my dad's hobby was racing. So I grew up first. He was racing motorcycles before I was born. Then he started racing cars because all his buddies that he knew and grew up with were racers. So that's how it started. And uh, so I knew what my career path was going to be by the time I was nine years old. And it wasn't going to be in the family company. <laughs> and, for, and for you, really, at what point did you realize, I'm going to make it as a professional racer? Was there like an aha moment or was there just a moment in time where you realized, yes, I'm making a career out of this? When I, when I won my first race, uh, you know, I went to England. And you don't really know, you, there's a lot of questions in your mind as to uh, what your capabilities are. Well, in my second race, I won. And I won against some drivers who now are world champion, like Nigel Mansell. Mansell and I started together wow. in the same series, right? We used to bang it up. And so um, after my second race on the way home, a friend of mine was driving uh, his BMW. In fact, he drove me to the race. That was it. I knew that that was the first step, right? And racing is layers. David Starr will tell you that. It's layers. You start go-karts, and then you start um, you start uh, in, in small formulas, and then you go, you know, you end up, and you the whole time you're testing yourself. Your whole time you're being tested as to, okay, this level, I'm successful. Next level, I'm successful. Well, I went through a lot of levels just to get to IndyCar. It wasn't a, I wasn't fast track to IndyCar. And, and as far as NASCAR is concerned, I didn't have the team to be competitive. You know, it was a, we had hardly anything with Dygard. Dygard was fading away at the time. And, uh, you know, we didn't have, a Hendrix operation or a Childress operation. I mean, it was a uh, shoestring. You cannot win. As Marlon Andretti has the greatest saying in the world, Marlon says that if it takes 1,000 components to win and you got 999, you got, you're at a disadvantage. Well, I was at 450. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah. That is understandable, big time. I mean, it, you got to have the equipment, and uh, you got to have the finances behind you. And uh, it's it's amazing to hear uh, hear you talk about that, Willie. And uh, it, it's kind of cool to hear you speak about Mario. We had him on on our show about three weeks ago, and uh, so that's kind of cool. But uh, but man, you had he, Mario on. Yeah, Mario was with us. He was on for about an hour and a half with us, no doubt about Dang. it. <laughs> Dang, you, well, you have gone big time. <laughs> oh no! Uh, Let me tell you what, Mario. Mario doesn't uh, uh, turn on the TV or answer the phone unless he's being paid. I mean, really? yeah, he did. Whoa, whoa, when he walks out the door, you thought 
you know, him and Bobby Unser. Now, Bobby Unser and I were real close. And I mean, uh, I went to his, he passed just recently and I went to his funeral. I, I, uh, his wife said that Bobby asked that I carry him to be a pallbearer. He asked. That's the greatest honor I could ever get from any race driver ever to be asked to be a pallbearer for them. So uh, Uncle Bobby would always tell me, he says, really, he says, all these guys want, want everything for free. He says, just send them to me. I'll get you the money. <laughs> <laughs> so I would do it as a prank. I, you know, people call, I said, I, Uncle Bobby said, call him. He'll, he'll, he'll tell you what, what it's going to take. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. It is. Willie, uh, of all the things you've done, what are you most proud of over the years? Well, one, being a good dad. You know, raising my kids on my own while I was raising. I mean, my, I had Theo uh, and my daughter was four and Theo was nine months in diapers. And I raised them by myself from that age. So probably that first. And then as far as you know, professional accomplishments, I would say, you know, the, the, the races that I uh, raced in and won in and, and of course, Indy. I mean, Indy is like no place on the planet, gentlemen. I cannot tell you just how difficult that place is. Uh, and you're there for a month. It, you know, you're not there for three days, Friday, Saturday, go home on race and go home on Sunday. Every day you wake up and you got to run 225 miles per hour. Wow. Now, now it's 230 every day. And, and the place was built in 1911. It's this narrow. It's got nine degrees in bank. And they haven't changed it since 1911, except for, you know, it's asphalt now. But uh, it is the weather changes. You can uh, go out at... 11 a.m. in the morning or 9 a.m. whenever the track opens and you're you feel like you're a stud baby you feel like <laughs> you know you feel like a cat can't scratch it that's just how 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 tough you feel and you're running about 229 230 in those days then you go back out don't change anything haven't touched anything looks good boys put the cover on it go back out at two o'clock and you just lost seven miles per hour, and the car feels like it wants to crash. Wow. Oh, I mean, it is it is the most, and if you let it, and Mario, and, and Bobby, Bobby, Uncle Bobby told me, he says, don't let it get into your head. He said, just keep working with the car and the engineers. If it's not right, take it back to the garage, put it on the pad, right? Keep, be patient, because if you're not, that Indy always wins. In a crash, the wall wins every time. <laughs> wow. Amazing to hear you. Uh, I mean, we, we, we have no clue what that feels like and the intensity you're talking about for is a month. We can't, it's hard to comprehend it. Hard to comprehend the speed you're talking about, Willie. And, uh, you know, when, when you feel like Superman, and, uh, I mean, you think you're the man, you're pounding your chest because you're running 230. You put a cover on it, everything's good. You uncover that baby around 3 o'clock to make make just one more run for the day's end. And I, I can't fathom you're seven miles an hour off the pace and you're like – and the thing's driving like it wants to wreck. I, I can't imagine that feel and that intensity of driving something going that fast when it's not underneath you. I mean, I just – I've never been able to comprehend, to comprehend it or have, have I ever been able to, I mean, it's just hard to fathom, but I, I have a lots and lots and lots of respect for men like yourself, uh, the men and women that race the Indy cars, because when it goes bad there, it's usually not career threatening. Sometimes it's life threatening. You know what I mean? And uh, I mean, you guys are dare, daredevils and what y'all have done and making Indianapolis 500. I, I call it the biggest, race in the world i mean when there's five six hundred people show up for that race 
it's worldwide. It's, 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 you know, it's a world of death. And uh, like you said, I think the racetrack opened up 1911 and the racetrack's the same. So much tradition, so much history. But man, I can't imagine being there for a freaking month and all the laps you run and the speeds you go and just the emotions. It's just, it's amazing to hear you even speak. Right, and that's just it. You have to absolute discipline yourself to be cool. Okay, because you'll go out there and you'll go, you'll, you'll, you'll go and you'll do a couple of warm up laps and then you, all right, before the tires start to, you know, uh, start to give up a little bit, you want to put in a flyer, right? And you're like, oh, where did the speed go? And you know that if you try to muscle that thing around there, right? If you, if, if it doesn't want, if that, when you uh, enter into turn one, for example, which to me is the toughest corner on the racetrack, when you get in there and if that thing feels like it, it gives you a little wiggle, it's like someone not hitting you on your shoulder, it's like a touch. It's like, okay, the car is telling you that it's, it's loose because it's either this and then it wiggles a little bit or this and then it snaps it's just snaps and you and i know you gentlemen have seen it and your audience has seen it you'll go flying in there and get right to the center of the corner and that thing rotates and you don't know like holy where did it come from was it a gust of wind because wind there okay one end of the track it pins the front end down and and, and you're neutral to loose then you go back on the other end of the track and it's pushing so you have to keep that in your mind, especially in a race. You're like, okay, remember, it's pushing in this corner and it's loose here. Don't mix it up. Don't forget. Wow. Um, amazing. Just absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. Now, um, now Will, I, I got to know, you know, when you look at your time on and off the track, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced over the years? Well, in my career, it was corporate America. I did not get the support from corporate America that the other drivers got. And, you know, and it was the, you know, a lot of the feedback was, well, African Americans don't follow racing. Right. Are you kidding me? You got to come up with something better than that. Right. African Americans didn't follow golf either until Tiger came in. Right. I know they were following golf. Tiger just came in and, and, and was a winner. Right. Um, but it, I would say it was mainly that. It, uh, that was the most difficult part. Um, all the rest, the, you know, that's part of the, uh, that's part of the ticket, right? The competition, the technical challenges. That's, that's, that's the, you know, that, that's what it costs, you know, to be in the sport, right? Um, but the other stuff, uh, was the most difficult part. Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting to hear you speak, uh, Willie. And, it, you know, it's interesting that Bobby Unser, I mean, I, I look at Bobby Unser and Al Unser and Al Unser Jr. and the Unser family. I mean, when you think of IndyCar racing, you know, you think of Foyt, Andretti, Unser, and the relationship and the respect you had, you earned that respect from legends, Bobby Unser. I mean, it's interesting that he told his wife when he passed that he wanted you to carry his casket, you to be a pallbearer. I mean, that's, that's some serious respect. So it's really cool to have, you know, to, to, for those the types of people, the superstars of, of our industry to have so much respect for a guy like you. I think that says a lot about your ability and about the person you are or you, and you are. Well, Lisa Unser, Bobby's wife, uh, she would always say to me, she says, Uncle Bobby loves you because <laughs> you reminded him of him. I said, well, what do you mean? Well, both of you two speak your mind. Both of you two race like crazy. Both of you two were chasing women everywhere you went. <laughs> and, and it, it, you guys were like twins. <laughs> And uh, uh, 
Wow. I love it, man. You get That's it. That's awesome. Of it. Hey, Willie, Willie, he don't sugarcoat anything. Just tells it like it is. But the cool part about it, Willie, I can assure you that there's not Willie T ribs out there anymore. We don't have, we don't, I, I mean, I, I don't even, I can't even think of one right now in, in, in our NASCAR world. That is a half of a Willie T ribs, man. You, uh, like you said, man, you, you lived at large, you did it all. And uh, amazing, man. And even even hearing Lisa call out her 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 husband, you know what I mean? I mean, that's uh, pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was I, you know, and despite all the obstacles, you know, and not everybody was really in the industry was uh, liked or loved uh, Willie T. Rips. That was OK. I was good with that. But when you got a, a man like Unser, Bobby Unser. That is, and and Al Unser Jr. Al Unser Jr. and I talk every night. Well, we're business partners too, but you know, every night. And that whole family has been just from you know from the time Al Jr. was nineteen. In fact, we were teammates when he was nineteen at the Daytona Twenty Four Hours. So, wow, you know that keeps you motivated when you when you have that and. No, there's not going to be any Willie T. Ribs in the sport. Uh, I think SRX is, that's what SRX is going to do. SRX is going to let the drivers be themselves. It's going to be a show. When people turn on SRX in two weeks on CBS, they, you guys are going to, you're, it's going to take more than popcorn. <laughs> you better, right, right. Have a have what one of those water burgers, right? Oh, absolutely. We'll have we'll have the cups and everything by our sides. Yes, right. And and not beer, whiskey, because you guys are going to be on the floor lap. That's and awesome. You, well, man. really, yeah. that's a great segue into kind of what we've been talking about too with the SRS experience. What are you most looking forward to in the summer stretch and being a competitor in the series in the inaugural year? You know, there. Every driver, no matter the, this is a a super a series. It really is a. It's like I Rock days. Remember that, David? Mm -hmm. When I Rock was on. It's like it's a spinoff from I Rock. Right. Now, any time race drivers race against each other, it means something. Okay, if they are racing in the space shuttle to the moon. It might not mean much in the, in the scheme of things, but it means something as far as being competitive, right? Absolutely. All these guys out here, I'm going to be the oldest driver in the race, okay? Then Bill from yeah, Dawsonville, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Bill from Dawsonville is, uh, is, is second oldest. Bill's 65. I'm 66. So Elliot says to me, we did this CBS uh, promo, uh, a couple of weeks ago, no, it was three weeks ago in Charlotte. I mean, the production that they did for the, the promo was insane. It was a, it was a half a million dollar production for wow. one day. At least a half a million, probably more. So uh, Elliot says, hey, 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 Willie T, how should we go to go up to the cars? Should we go on those little scooters? You know, those little scooters that people of age drive around in, in the supermarket with the red seat <laughs> and, the, and the little handles right up here. <laughs> Elliot says, I'm bringing two of those and you drive one and I'll drive the other to the car. When So when we go to get to the car, we can wave <laughs> to the crowd when they do driver's introductions from our scooter. And I said, I said, I said, look, Elliot, nobody's going to buy that. They, they, the other drivers are going to like, okay, these guys are just trying to soften us up. You know, they're just, right. Nobody feels sorry for anybody. You ever see old lions and young lions in National Geographic? Well, the young lions are always trying to bite the old lions, right? Because, yeah. you know, they got their butt whipped for so long as they were cubs. They were getting pawed around. No, no, you ain't getting this one. That's my, that's my, my cat right there, son. So you keep your hands off. So, um, no, it's, uh, it, it's going to be aggressive. There won't be one straight car, David. If anybody knows, right. there won't, every car is going to be bent. Everham has no idea how many wrecked cars 
they're gonna have, but they're gonna be very valuable wrecked because they're gonna auction them off. Absolutely. You know what's got? Gotta, let me jump in here real quick. Go ahead, Tyler. This list of guys you're competing against with Willie is so impressive of champions of all different forms of racing. Is there one guy or, or two in particular that you really just want to ruffle some feathers and really beat out there? Who, who comes to mind of, of that field of competitors you're competing with? I don't really have an ax to grind with any of the drivers, unfortunately. Okay, now. <laughs> now, no, no, no. Okay. You know, now, you know the guy who's going to be uh, the animal out there? His name is Tracy. Not Dick Tracy. Paul Tracy, but they call him Dick too, right? So, <laughs> no, Tracy, Tracy's going to be, he's going to be the most aggressive. And, uh, you know, if, like I said, if Scott Goodyear was in a race or Eddie Cheever or, uh, or Bobby Rahal, oh, oh, we got some axes we want to grind. Get, <laughs> get, get that wheel out, you know. Right. That, that, then it would really, we'd really have some, uh, a rumble. Who's well, the guy I, to beat, you think? Is, uh, is it Tony who's heading this all up? Does he have an advantage of some sorts or is there somebody else you think? Tony Stewart is going to be really tough. For one, one of the tracks he owns <laughs> is called Eldora. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, you know, uh, he, but we made a deal. He's got to start 10 laps down. <laughs> so uh, Tony's going to be tough. Uh, Bobby Labani, uh, they're the guys who have done that, you know, have cut their teeth on that. And, and you know, that's bull ring stuff. Mm. Half a mile. Every race is a half mile. Two on dirt four on asphalt so you know they they grew up you know uh in those on those bull rings and uh but you know the we're gonna fight we're you know we're gonna we're gonna lay it lay it on each other and i'm gonna tell you what it is going to be aggressive abraham when he built the cars he built an industrial strength right front and an industrial strength left rear I mean, the, uh, I don't know how they're going to balance it because it's so heavy on the right front because all that banging is going to happen. Yeah. Well, Willie, all I know is, uh, you know, you said you're 67, 66, whatever, that, whatever you said your age was. And I know Bill Elliott wanting to drive out to the race car in a scooter that you see a lot of elderly people riding around at Walmart. I can assure you that, when you step in that race car, we're going to see the Willie T. Ribs that we've always known. The guy that's talented, no nonsense, take that thing to the front. And uh, I'm so excited to watch. I can't, I can't wait, man, you know. And, uh, and I, I can assure you, if you don't get the finished results that you want, you just wait till the next race, uh, you know. And, and we're just hearing you talk. You know, I don't think Willie T. Ribs lost that competitive edge that he always had. You know what I mean? So you talk about Bill Elliott and Tony Stewart, Bobby Labonte, and just Paul Tracy, and you know all these all these guys. I I can't wait, and I'm so I'm so glad that Ray beefed up the right front and the left rear because man, we're, it's going to be one hell of a show. And uh, well, the first race is absolutely sold out. People are calling me and texting me saying, hey, how do I get a ticket? It's sold out. I said, well, get a, a uh, boom lift and go to the outside of the track and raise the boom lift <laughs> and, and, and watch. So if you see a bunch of boom lifts on the outside of the racetrack, you know where that came from. Oh, man, that's oh, funny. Man. That's great. Guys, uh, we got to get to our news and notes segment here in just one second. But before we do, a reminder, as always, that Let's Go Racing with David Starr is presented by Whataburger. Stop by Whataburger for a hot, hearty breakfast any morning, late at night. 
They're serving up breakfast 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. Proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day. What a burger. All right, Dom, let's get to our news and notes. Uh, looking back on the weekend at Coda, and it was Chase Elliott that won uh, the uh, cup race, and it did so under some unique circumstances, to say the least. Under some unique circumstances, Chase Elliott becomes yet another first-time winner in 2021. David, we keep talking about on the show every week how we're going to hit more than 16 winners. We're one closer now. So, Tyler, if my math's right, that's 11 winners now in the first 14 races of the 2021 Cup Series season. Guys, we're getting close to that 17 mark. Somebody could be snubbed from making the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Well, Isn't that crazy? Of, yeah, it is crazy. And, and, and Dominic and Tyler, I mean, we still hadn't seen Kevin Harvick into victory lane or, or Hamlin. Hamlin, you know? So, I mean, there's two that – that I think we'll we'll see a victory soon from, and uh, man, we might get to uh, those sixteen or seventeen winners before the before the playoffs even start. Absolutely, and Chase hit his twelfth career win at Coda, guys. That puts him right behind Tim Richmond, a fellow Hendrick Motorsports driver, on the all-time wins list, 59th all-time on the Cup Series win list. Again, only behind Tim Richmond and the other driver there. I have a list here, Dick Rathman. So he's starting to hit some other guys. On this wins list, he's going to start passing some guys here before we know it. He's won at least one race in the last four seasons. Willie, you're going to be racing against his dad. What do you think of Chase Elliott and the emergence that he's had really within the last year or so, it seems, he's really taken off? He's absolutely spectacular. I mean, and, and, and that's a broad term. When I saw him win that race in Charlotte, the Roval, he won that Charlotte race. Mm -hmm. It was a year ago, I think, when they ran uh, up on the car and then in the infield. It was a roll race, right? Yeah. yeah. He was smooth as silk. He, he's actually a natural road racer. Natural. Either you got it or you don't, right? Kyle Larson uh, did real well as uh, too at Coda. He's a natural. But to do it in the rain, okay. One thing, you know, dry surface is one thing, but to win in the rain, uh, it shows just what kind of car control he's got, what kind of feel he's got. He, uh, uh, Chase Elliott could drive any car tomorrow. After what I saw him do at, uh, on, uh, uh, in Charlotte on that Roval, and then what he did here out in, and, and I live. Uh, 35 minutes from Coda. So I've seen every Formula One race there except for one. And the way and how smooth he is. Uh, he's just Chase Elliott. Now, his daddy, uh, Bill, you know, <laughs> uh, just tell Chase to stay home. I don't want him racing with us, right? Just <laughs> leave the kid home, you know. Uh, but, you know, He's like his dad, you know, he, uh, they're both uh, uh, superstars. Yeah, certainly. And Willie, we were talking before we went on air about this weekend of how things went with the rain and how they dealt with that of sorts that it didn't go great uh, to put it mildly, but uh, the, the future of this, I mean, they, they got to stick with trying to figure out this rain thing going forward, right? Uh, I think it was awesome. You know, look at the fans that were there in the rain to watch. Okay. That it, it was, it was a great show. Now the drivers might sometimes, you know, you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, okay. When I was racing in England, I raced in the rain all the time. So, um, you know, I got used to it from the very, and I enjoyed racing it. I mean, it's hard to see occasionally, especially if you're coming up on somebody and they're throwing off a lot of spray. Uh, you know, you want you want to know where they're at. You want to know where puddles are. But uh, it's it's a challenge to do because it's a whole different world of uh, you know visibility, what the car, how the car is going to perform, how it's going to stop. Right? You got to get it stopped. Right? And then you know you got to get it to come off the corner, and. Um, it, they were great to watch in the rain. I've seen the Formula One cars in the rain there, but watching them go through there, through the chicane, 
uh, in the rain. It was awesome, man. That was a great show. David, do you like racing in the rain? Can you deal with that? <laughs> I don't know if I told Willie. Hell, I have a hard time doing the drive, but I'm just listening to what Willie was saying, you know, and I, I look back and I, I know Willie, you know, Willie has a lot of experience in the rain. And I wanted to ask Willie, all those Trans Am wins he had, I don't know what they were, you know, 30, 40. I don't know. He won all the time in Trans Am. And hearing Willie talk about what he saw at Coda uh, and have it, and I've, I've raced in the rain on a road course and, and, you know, not, you know, you don't run the line you'd run if it was dry. Uh, it's, 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 it's kind of crazy if you don't have much experience doing it and hearing what Willie was talking about, you know, knowing how to slow the car down and how, further back before you enter the corner and you need to get the car slow down and then trying to get, you know, trying to get the forward bite up off the corner when you got water in between your, your tires and, and, and the racetrack, you know, it was a challenge to me. I was like, man, I, I, when I did it, I, I, the first time and only time I ever done it, man, I was like, this is crazy. You know what I mean? But, but I, I tell you, there was some other guys I was out there racing with, and when they caught up to me, they came by, me, came by me about 30 miles an hour quicker. So there is a skill, a, a big skill set to racing in the rain, you know. And uh, and and I, what we saw Sunday was Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson and a lot of other ones. I mean, it was very impressive. But uh, And that takes me back to a question for Willie. Willie, all those Trans Am wins you had, did you – how many of them were in the rain? I think about half a dozen. Wow. All the race there uh, in the rain. One of my favorite rain races ever was uh, I was racing for Gurney, and then uh, it was some point, and it rained, and then it went dry. It rained, then it went dry. We, and I remember Dan coming on the radio, and I'm leading the race, and he says, the, the rain has stopped. Um I'm going to let you make the call on when you want to go to dry tires. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest sound in the world. Okay. Cause it, he had the confidence in me to know that, okay, this place is starting to dry up and these rains are not going to work on the dry. They're going to chunk. And uh, so we came in and then I went on dries and then it rained again. I came back in, we got on wets again, but we won the race. And doing it, you know, you, you just think, and I, I, there was a, a young kid who was driving Al, Al Neese's truck. His name was Carson mm -hmm. and uh, Kovar and uh, the 42 truck of Al Neese. Right. He's 18 wow. years old. He started, wow. he started uh, 23rd and he finished seventh. Well, before the race, and I was in the truck with him, I said, let the race come to you. Okay. It's going to be a long race. Let it come. If these guys want to get out there and bang on each other in the rain, let them. Okay. Cause they're eventually they're going to wear each other out or fly off or, or, or something's going to get bent. Go stay on the lead lap, stay smooth, let it come to you. And that's exactly what had happened. He ended up finishing seventh in Alan Neese's truck. And, uh, uh, afterwards, he says, he says, yeah, he says it was really not that difficult. Just don't make any mistakes. Let everyone else make mistakes. You know, now I told him, I said, remove that rear brake back a little bit. So, you know, so you don't lock those fronts on entry and, uh, you know, uh, you know, just, just roll off, roll that throttle, roll that throttle on and off. Amazing. How about that? Um, also uh, on our news and notes front uh, this week, uh, Dominic, uh, such a big weekend for, for racing as a whole. We already got Monaco out of the way last week, but nonetheless, uh, the Indy 500 and the Coke 600 coming up on Sunday, going to be a terrific day of 1,100 miles of racing back-to-back. -back. Absolutely. A couple of headlines to cover there first, but first we're going to go to the Coke 600 and some homegrown news out of our own backyard with the Let's Go Racing podcast. David Starr will be making his first Cup Series start of the 2021 campaign. He'll be running the number 66 MBM Motorsports Toyota Camry in the Coca-Cola 600. Dave, first time in 10 years you're running 
NASCAR is arguably second biggest race. How are you feeling about that? What's your outlook oh, for it? Man, you know, Carl's Carl's been at, you know, asking me, hey, you want to run a cup race, want to cup, run a cup race? And, uh, you know, I've been so focused on our Xfinity car and our partners and everything. And, uh, you know, Timmy Hill's been running our cup car. But finally, you know, I've, I've seen some changes going on. They're really, they brought in a new guy, a couple of new people working on that cup cars. They changing spindles and changing this and changing that. And, and I just wanted to see, a change uh, to try to make the car more competitive, find some speed in it. And uh, man, when I, after I seen what they've been working on and uh, I wanted to jump back in it and give it a shot. So uh, hopefully uh, I'm excited to go run 600 miles. We're going to run 300 miles on Saturday and then to back at back up uh, with the next day uh, with 600 miles, man, I'm excited and looking forward to getting in there and, and hopefully have a great race. You know, one of the things I want to do is, uh, finish the race but uh if we can be competitive or maybe find uh find our car carl's cup team uh you know you, you know it's if we get a little bit here a little bit there we find some more speed in the car the car drives better uh the future is going to be big for us so I, i'm excited to, to test out all the changes that have been going on over there at our on our on our cup cars and to, just to see what the difference is and uh and, and to kind of get an idea of what the future looks like for our cup team. So, uh, so man, I'm, I'm excited to run the Coca-Cola 600. I can't wait to wake up Sunday morning and I uh, mean, I'll be glued to that television, man. I, the, the, you know, size of the Daytona 500 and, uh, man, the, 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 the race I've been watching since I was a little boy, the Indianapolis 500, man, I can't wait. I love the broadcast. I love the traditions and to see them release all the balloons and hear, uh, hear them sing what, uh, what, I forget the song. Uh, Take me back uh, home, at, in, back home Indiana. in Indiana. At, man, I love that song. You know, I hate it. Jim Neighbors, is, you know, won't be singing it no more. But I, it's just all the traditions there, man, is just unbelievable. And and when that's over, I'm going gonna, gonna to head back over to the Charlotte Motor Speedway and get ready for the 600, man. I, I just – I can't wait, man. It's just a big race weekend, and I'm excited to be just a small part of it. Willie, before we ask you about Indy, I got, I got to ask you first – do you have any advice, any tips for uh, for David this weekend as he runs 900 miles in two days? Well, you know, I know when I saw him, he looked in good physical condition. And, you know, you want to be, you know, I've been training two a day for SRX. And, you know, it's going to be, you know, you especially having raced in a while, you know, a lot of these guys – have got some gristle on them because they've been racing, right? And so they got that mu racing memory, uh, muscle memory. Um, but, you know, you better be, you know, I've always wanted to be in shape when I got into that race car physically because there's a saying in the boxing gym. Um, if you don't come in in shape, you could get hurt, right? Well, that's the same with the race car. You don't come in in shape, you can get hurt because if you physically start to tire, then you're, you're not sharp. You're not on top of the car. The car is driving you. You're not driving the car. So, um, you know, David looked like he's, uh, he didn't look any older uh, or, or softer since I've seen him in 20 years, right? It's the last time I saw him. So, um, but, you know, uh, after 900 miles, <laughs> you gonna want to lay? You gonna want to lay down, son? <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Willie. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, well, and hey, if there's some green white checkers, David might be like 930, 940 miles when it's all said and done. <laughs> oh, well, well, we'll, we'll see. If well, we I got somebody to root for now yeah. in that race. You know, uh, I will be watching just for the star. <laughs> well, that makes uh, that makes about what five of us now, four or five of us, because Mario said he was going to be rooting for David too. Okay, there you go. 
Well, what, what we have him on, we were in uh, that we had him on foot. We went to Darlington and uh, uh, we had a pretty good race there, and, and I'm sure he was tuned in. And then they, uh, I think Joey Legato had a throwback of one of Mario's cars, so I know Mario was glued into that weekend, you know. And uh, so I, I think uh, I think Legato ended up fifth or sixth in that cup race the next day, so uh, it was just pretty cool to. You know, to like have a you know Willie T. Ribs, Mario Andretti. It's pretty cool to have guys like that on our podcast. So Willie, we really appreciate you spending time with us, buddy. You got some big fans there, David. Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, real quick on the Coke Six Hundred before we move on to Indy, uh, let's go around the room. Give me a name to watch. Dominic, we'll start with you. Who's the guy to beat on Sunday besides David? Obviously, I, I know. You know, it's going to be hard to pick <laughs> against David, but. If I can't pick David for the Coke 600, I'm going to go with Chase Elliott to get it done. He got robbed last year, right? Led the most laps, ended up not winning the race. I think Chase Elliott gets redemption and goes back to back in the Coke 600, following up that win from Coda, and will tie Tim Richmond on the wins list. Okay. Willie, who are you watching for besides uh, David to, uh, to do well on Sunday in that uh, Coke 600? My boy, Kyle Larson. <laughs> yeah. Guy, uh, I. We have a relationship, and and I'm sure all of you know the relationship. What happened with Kyle a year ago, and uh, you know I, he was young, and and people, and these kids today they want to be cool, they want to sound cool, they want to sound hip. Well, he he was trying to sound hip uh, with the wrong word on open mic, and and you know he got he got spanked hard for it. I understand, and I stood by him, and and uh, and I talk with him, and I talk with his parents, and uh, I just think he's a good kid. We all make mistakes, uh, and 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 move on. I'm not going to hold him, uh, hold him to that. I'm going to root for him, and uh, and he's super talented. There's no question. Elliot and Larson of the young uh, of the young lions, they got the sharpest teeth. Yeah, well, they do. David, uh, who are you going to be uh, watching for uh, on Sunday? Uh, do, uh, who do you think is going to be running up front there? Well, I mean, they're all. I mean, you know, Martin Truex, uh, Chase Elliott, Cal Larson. I mean, you those, you know, any of those guys can win. But I, I want to say Kevin Harvick. You know, Harvick's. You know, the last. Uh, mile and a half track they were on. I think he finished second or third and, you know, winning nine races last year in 2020, not making the chase. Uh, and then, you know, Stuart, ha Stuart Haas as organizations has struggled this year, but I see Kevin, I see them getting closer and closer and I know he's hungry. I spoke to him on, uh, it was uh, Friday. I spoke to him for about 10 minutes and, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised. He's the guy that I'm going to say is going to get it done in the 600 because I know their team, that organization, and I know Kevin, man, those guys are working hard to get back on top of that throne like they were in 2020, you know. But it only takes one race, one race to put him in that chase. You know, last year he won nine and didn't make the cut, which I thought was very interesting, you know what I mean? Uh, so it only takes that one race. I think we're going to see Kevin Harvard and Victor Lane at the 600. I'll go with uh, the defending champ of this race, uh, Brad Kozlowski. I know that there's talk about his future going to Roush and such, but he's run so well at Charlotte in the past. They're bringing back the Miller Lite paint scheme. That's the paint scheme that belongs on the two car. Um, you know, I, I think Brad K will be a uh, bad fast to uh, come this uh, weekend there in Charlotte. So you're having – what a burger and Miller beer, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's a dream team combination. I tell uh, you. That, that tastes good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good combination for when we're watching Willie in a couple of weeks. What do you think, guys? <laughs> hey, that's what oh, we'll do when we watch SRX. Uh, absolutely. Indy 500, uh, we mentioned it, uh, coming up Sunday uh, before the Coke 600. Willie, you know it as good as anybody. Tell us about what to expect from uh, this Sunday's Indy 500 uh, this year. You know, I think the most important uh, – Indy is two races. The first part is – endurance 
you run and you're doing laps and, 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 and staying out, stay on the lead lap, run fast. Don't worry. You don't have to get into a, a, a punching contest with anybody early. Right. And try to get your car balanced. Right. Because mm -hmm. what these drivers are doing, they're, they're manipulating, they're racing, but they're working on their car at the same time. They're trying to, you know, uh, with their crew chief deciding how that the car is going to, what is it like full tanks? And what is it like as the fuel burns off? And I'm telling you, you're burning off a gallon and a half a lap. Wow. Okay. You can actually feel the car get lighter every lap. It's the most amazing feeling, right? Wow. You can feel it and responds better because because when you go out and it's full, it feels like an overfed camel, right? Like, <laughs> you're, like you're riding a camel, right? That's that and then it, you know, after half the run, it starts feeling like a racehorse. And uh, the last the last 50 miles is when you start strategizing on how you can win. I want to tell you, Sato, Takuma Sato, he won that thing last year. He should have, uh, he's won it twice. He should have won it three times. He got to do it with Dario on the last two laps uh, a few years back. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Sato's going to be tough because he just, in the end, he always comes down to stretch strong. I'm going to pick Sato again. Okay. Uh, I got to go with Scott Dixon. Uh, I think it's he's the man to beat. And, and you know, I, I heard comparisons that he's like the Kevin Harvick of IndyCar. And, uh, you know, the way that he's been running the last year or so since the pandemic, uh, I mean, Scott Dixon's going to be tough to beat. But, Willie, I'm going to be rooting on one of your SRX competitors, Elio Castroneves. Uh, I hope Elio does well. I've always been an Elio fan. He's probably my favorite IndyCar racer ever. And so – Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Hold on, Seabiscuit. <laughs> Hold on. Did you just say you wanted Castroneves to beat me at SRX? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to win SRX. No, no, no. Oh, 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 oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Price is averted. Man, man. <laughs> okay, I was heading for the button. Like, leave, <laughs> leave, leave me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Willie, since coming on your show, we're we're very uh we're we're pro Willie fans from absolutely, this. absolutely, absolutely, no doubt about it. <laughs> oh, Castro Nevis gonna. I mean, those guys, Castro Nevis. Dixon, uh, especially the guys who who've been there and have won it before, they know how to win. They 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 know how to run that race too. But it just you know, and the reason I say Sato, because Sato, Sato when in the end he lays the lumber down, son. A cat, you know, he, you know his last pit stop, they hand him some testosterone pills. <laughs> You on this? So, now go get him. <laughs> man, the, the things we've seen him do in the IndyCar, man, it's he's been impressive the last six, seven years, man. I love watching him at Indy because, uh, like like Willie's saying, man, he's uh, he's got big ones, big ones, big ones, man. He does okay, some yeah. stuff. It's like it's amazing, you know. Who are you yeah. watching for, David? Well, I, you know, Tony Kanon, you know. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tony Kanaan's. Love to see him win one more Indy 500. And uh, I hadn't really kept up with it. I got to be honest with you. I got, uh, since we were in, uh, in Austin this past weekend, they had qualifying. I don't even know who's on the pole. I have it DVR'd. Uh, I've been so busy. I hadn't had a chance to sit down and watch qualifying. But I think I'm going to do that this evening. I'm going to, I'm going to, turn on Indy qualifying and kind of keep up with it, see what's going on there. But, uh, you know, I like to see Tony Kanon have a shot at it. Uh, and, you know, my, my, my hero, my great friend, A.J. Foyt, uh, any of his drivers, I'd like to see A.J. back in victory lane again, uh, one of his cars. But, you know, I, I don't know who's going to win it, but I, I do know this. I know it's going to be spectacular. Every year I, I go back to – you know, just thinking about Willie and his IndyCar career and running the Indy 500s like he did. 
But, man, just seeing those guys come down the front straightaway, the back straightaway, the drafting, I mean, they're running each other all the way down to the grass at 232 miles an hour. I mean, it's just – it's just, it's a spectacular race, and I'm so excited about it. I can't wait for a May every year just because of the Indianapolis 500. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dominic, uh, let's have you jump in here. There is a NASCAR connection. Uh, Juan Pablo Montoya will be running in the Indy 500. He's won this race before. Who yes. are you watching for to uh, possibly pull into uh, victory lane and, and chug that milk on Sunday? Well, you know, kind of like you, Dave, I was kind of looking and just kind of trying to get up to speed on what was going on with Indy qualifying and just reading the story of Will Power, scrubbing the wall in his qualifying run, almost missing the show. We're talking the 2018 Indianapolis 500 champion, the guy that trails Mario Andretti for polls all time in the IndyCar series, only five behind him at 62. And he's starting on the last row on Sunday. Will Power was almost bumped from the Indy 500 field. But you look at somebody like that, I am curious to see how he's going to claw his way through the field on Sunday and what Will Power can do. Will he get to the front right away? Can he make it to the front? It's going to be fun to see Will Power start in that final row with Simone de Silvestro. Yeah, I think so. I think you're absolutely right about and that. Tyler, one of the things I want to ask, speaking about that, I want to ask Willie. You know, uh, I have read something yesterday that Will Power was, he was off uh, speed-wise. But maybe his car drives really, really, really good. And I don't know. Like I said, I hadn't watched it yet. I'm, I'm going to tune in here later on and watch some of it. But maybe his car is set up for some downforce, has some drag on it. And maybe that's what it's going to take to win the Indianapolis 500. And Willie, as the competitor, as a former Indianapolis 500 competitor, what do you want? You want speed a little bit out of control or you want stability and maybe a couple miles, miles per hour off? I mean, you know what I mean? Is there a cat and mouse game with that kind of stuff? No. Well, uh, I talked to Al Jr. yesterday and, and Al laid it on the line. Al says that, you know, years before Chevy had the top end power. They had the grunt. Okay. This year, and I don't know if it's because Honda's in Formula One and what they learned from Formula One, but Honda's got the grunt on the top end this year. That's why okay. the top nine cars are nearly all Hondas. Wow. Now, when you have that kind of uh, uh, top end power, you can put more downforce in it. Absolutely. Right? Because it'll pull it, right? Absolutely. Now, if you don't have a uh, uh, top end power, you got to start trimming it out. Right. But when you start trimming it out, uh, it keeping that thing in a headlock for 500 miles uh, will definitely uh, get your attention. And it's not comfortable. Right. It's just it, the thing just feels like it's just sort of, you know, you, you know, you can feel that place when you got a lot of downforce and you got power because the, the, the faster you go around there the more downforce it makes. Wow. So if you got the grunt to pull that, that extra downforce, Honda's going to be the one to be this year. Man, that's really interesting. to, to Man, you just put it in perspective. So it's really the Honda motor. Uh, there's something there. I mean, obviously the top nine are Hondas, and uh, they found something there, obviously. And, uh, wow, it's – it's uh, Interesting to hear Willie explain it like that. Wow, it's going to be an interesting oh, yeah. race. So, you know, Dominic was talking about Will Powers being way back there. And obviously, Will Power is not in a Honda uh, car. I mean, his, I guess he's Chevrolet. Uh, he might have his work cut out for him uh, from, from hearing what Willie is saying. Yeah, it seems to be that way. Yeah. Uh, well, in the Chevy, I mean, for, for years, Chevy was Mr. Muscle. Yeah. Chevy had the grunt. And, you know, and Honda got out of IndyCar racing for a while. Well, now they're back in it. And, you know, they didn't say anything in the off season. You know, they, they're, they're, they're collecting data from each other. They're learning from what they found in Formula One. For, their power in Formula One now is, oh, wow. is, is equal Mercedes. So, you know, before Mercedes used to have the grunt. Well, now they've matched Mercedes. Uh, uh, Pound for pound, Andy Carr, it was Chevrolet, uh, had the muscle. Now Honda is out-muscling them. 
I love the battle between the manufacturers. It's fascinating. Uh, great stuff. It's there. the best. It's the best. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. One more segment before we get out of here today, our Ask David segment, where we ask you to submit questions to us on Facebook. David Star Podcast is where you can find us there. Twitter at Star Podcast. And by email, davidstarpodcast at gmail.com. Before we do that, uh, a quick plug for Whataburger. Don't forget that Whataburger is made fresh, served hot, and prepared just like you like it. Want jalapenos and cheese on that? No problem. They've got you covered. Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day. What a burger. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the mailbag. Uh, first uh, question, Willie. Uh, this one comes from Mike on Twitter at MD Anderson ABQ. Uh, Mike writes, the fan experience is there at Coda and good, but is the experience there for the drivers? What say you, Willie? Anytime a driver steps into the car, David can vouch for that. It's an experience. I mean, whether you're running up front, whether you've won, whether you're running mid-pack, you're racing. And the fans get that thrill, but the drivers get that thrill too. It's just a different type of thrill. What say you, David? Absolutely. I, I just, the, the energy in Austin, Texas, uh, I know there's always been energy for F1 and the different type of racing that happens at Coda, but to bring NASCAR into Austin, Texas and to have, the NASCAR Camper Wheel Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Cup Series racing there on Saturday and Sunday <clears throat> and seeing how Willie hit on it earlier, just all the fans. Uh, and then on pit road, when you pitted, and the way the, the, the suites and the stands kind of overlap the front straightaway, I mean, the energy there, I'm sure – you know, every driver was eating it up because they they were loving it. The fans were loving it. So I think it was an awesome experience for everybody involved. Okay. Uh, got another question for you. Uh, this one's from uh, Joseph on Twitter. This one's for, uh, for you, Willie. Uh, uh, Joseph on Twitter, at Joe Wolken writes, uh, Willie, what's your thoughts on how Lewis Hamilton and Bubba Wallace have approached handling racism? The racism for Lewis Hamilton is totally different. Uh, he's in Europe. Uh, it, it's I, I race there. I live there. So I didn't uh, deal. You, you don't get the same type of racism in, in Europe that, that you might, that you'll get here, right? Racism here will be in your face. The racism over there, if, the, if you run into it, it's it's subtle it's not it's not so hard you know now in soccer games if you watch soccer over there in some countries the african players and uh, uh, players of color get taunted by uh by especially in spain and and it's happened in italy right but uh you know i i dealt with it before Lewis was born and before Bubba was born. And I didn't have, you know, it didn't bother me because I wasn't ever concerned about anybody getting in my face with that. No, not at all. <laughs> I'll, I do it, I'll use it in a heartbeat and I have and enjoyed it. It's that I think fighting is fun. So, um, you know, I didn't, you know, now I got the letters and the death threats and all that. The, the funniest thing about the letters and the death threats and the letters, they were all misspelled except for the N-word. <laughs> it could, it could spell shit, right? I mean, it was, it, the, the spelling, I mean, you know, uh, even cat was spelled wrong. They spelled cat C-T-A, right? But, but they got the N-word right. So, um, you know, it was fun. And, you know, we'd have a beer and drink and laugh because my grandpa used to say to me, when I was growing up on the ranch, he was a very tough man. He says, all those threats, he says, those same people, all they're going to do in the end is use the toilet if they keep eating regular. They ain't going to do a damn thing. 
and none of it happened. And I hate to be uh, graphic, but I'm firm about that, gentlemen. And that's how I that's how I handled it. I didn't get it from any of the drivers. Very and very seldom. Uh, not none of the N word. That's for damn sure. But you know, I mean, there was some uh, you know there was some animosity, but it wasn't in my face. I mean, it was like David Starr. David was when I was racing when we were racing Craftsman trucks in 01, Man, we were really cool with each other. Fun. It was fun to, to race against each other, then get out of the truck uh, and and go party. But uh, you know, Bubba, you know he's you're gonna have to deal with it, and um, you know you're just gonna have to roll with it. That's that's the nature of the biz. But don't turn that cheek, son, because I didn't. Don't turn the other cheek. I think one thing, just hearing you speak, it just, it, you know, I, I, you backed up, man. You were a tough guy. You're a tough race car driver. Just winning all the races, all the races. I, I think, you know, you you proved yourself. I mean, you know, you were just, you were a stud, man. It just, uh, it's hard to fathom that, you know, just watching up at E and, and not being in your shoes. But, you know, I, I'll look at you and just, Think you're just great, but man, I don't, I don't see, I don't see skin color. You know what I mean? And I, I know that's not how it is. That's not real, you know. And that's not, that's just not how it works, you know. But not for all of us. But I just see a great race car driver and a cool dude, you know. But uh, I think your toughness and uh, uh, your, your, you know, and that, that no, you didn't have no quit in you. And uh, I think people came to love you and love you who you were as a driver and love you who you were as a person. You know what I mean? And, and I think you made, I think Willie T. Ribs paved the, opened up many, many roads and lanes for others to become professional race car drivers. You know, however you wanted that to look, NASCAR, IndyCar, uh, uh, you know, SCCA or what have you, you know, but, uh, but anyway, it's just, you know, I, I know it was there, but it's a shame to hear it. But, uh, but man, I, I I love hearing your your toughness and, and giving it to us real. It's like, uh, hey, Dave, somebody, I tell you, yeah. If anyone has a problem with someone's race or their yeah. skin color or nationality, right? they have an inferiority complex. Absolutely. Okay. You feel inferior. If you're intimidated by some, if you're intimidated by a woman, who's out there racing with you, <laughs> all right? You got an inferiority complex, son. Absolutely, okay? man. You need, to, you need to just stay in bed. Don't get up. Okay? <laughs> That's true. But look at yeah. yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and see what you are, what kind of man or woman you are. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. What a great discussion uh, we've had today, Willie. We appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll definitely have to have you back on again in the future. There's, I feel like we got to go another hour and a half uh, with this. Uh, Willie, tell us before we go here, what does your next couple weeks look like as uh, you get ready for SRX and count down to that? What, what are you doing these next few days leading up? I'm going to be busier than a blind dog in a butcher shop. I'm a, <laughs> no, I... I, 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 I Everywhere, everywhere I sniff is going to be me, and uh, awesome. uh, it's I'm just busy because uh, SRX fires up in little two and a half weeks. Our first show is June 12th in Connecticut. Prior to that, I'm going to be uh, I might have a secret test somewhere, <laughs> not in an SRX car, yeah. but maybe an Area 51 in Nevada. <laughs> A secret test. Awesome, so, man. Uh, but yeah, oh, I'm, that was I'm New Mexico. Yeah, huh? Roswell. <laughs> yeah, New Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do it. You know, I mean, uh, part of the Manhattan Project. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Willie, tell everybody what's going on this weekend. Uh, I mean, this is the 30th anniversary of uh, of uh, you making you becoming the first. African-American to make the Indianapolis 500. Uh, I, I think this is the 30th anniversary of that first race you made. Is that correct? That's correct. You know, that was, 
the 75th running. That race had run 75 years. Wow, without a Before uh, I came there in 1991. So wow. it's the 30th. And they asked me, well, how do you feel? We, we want to celebrate it. The track is celebrating it. Uh, in the, uh, the Speedway and, and uh, Capitol, uh, the Columbia Club downtown in Indianapolis were put, they're putting on a, a function and a, and, a, and a speaking, and I'll speak. Uh, uh, and, and there'll be people there that are going to talk about 30 years of friendship. And anyway, it's going to be one big party. Look, 50 is 20 years from now. Wow. 20 years from now makes me 86. What's that do for you, Star? How many? <laughs> how are you? 75? Well, hey, let me, let me tell you, uh, uh, the fiftieth, I won't be there. I won't be there. I promise you, I won't be there listening to you speak. Okay, so I'll well, make it. I'm there too. for the fiftieth. Yeah, you, I would hope like hell, because there won't be the seventy fifth. That's for sure. <laughs> well, dude, you've been. Hey, man, you've been a. You're just a great guy, man. I, I think you're awesome, and man, you you have done so much for our sport of auto racing, F1, IndyCar. Car, I mean. Just, uh, just the whole industry. You, uh, you know, I, I think you've done more than most for our industry, and it's an honor to be your friend. It's an honor to have you on our podcast, and, and you're just one cool dude. That's all I can say. And thank you. Well, it takes cool to no cool. <laughs> well, right? Yeah, absolutely. We will. We all will agree yeah, with we're, that. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're cool, baby. I see it, baby. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you can stick a straw in our drink anytime. <laughs> David, uh, before we go here, tell us about uh, about your week uh, gearing up for your Cup debut of the uh, 2021 campaign, also the Xfinity race. What's the days leading up look like? Man, every, man, I'm excited. Uh, tomorrow, I got a big sponsor meeting at lunchtime, and uh, uh, with a, with a couple of great companies to do more Cup racing in 2021. And then when we get done with that meeting tomorrow, I'm going to uh, come back home, take my blue, my two little boys and my wife to dinner. And then I got a 6 a.m. flight to Charlotte on Thursday morning. You got to get, get there. And, and you going to Olive my, Garden? Uh, uh, I, I will be going to Olive Garden. It might be Thursday night or Friday night. I don't know about tomorrow night. But, uh, man, just, uh, you know, come Friday, Thursday morning, it's, it's, it's race time, man. Be at the shop all day Thursday, maybe late into the night. Friday, we'll be over to Charlotte Motor Speedway. And, uh, man, I can't wait to get my Whataburger uh, Toyota Super for our Xfinity race Saturday afternoon. And then uh, and then I can't wait to wake up Sunday morning and watch the Indianapolis 500. Uh, man, I just think that's the coolest race. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm tickled to be able to run the, the Coca-Cola 600. So, man, just going to be a great weekend of racing. Hopefully we can put that Whataburger Toyota – uh, super uh, close to Victory Lane uh, or in Victory Lane Saturday afternoon. So, man, just just excited for a great weekend. Man, uh, and that trip to the, the Olive Garden, too. I mean, this guy's <laughs> going to get that Dr. Pepper float, which isn't even on the menu, but he'll find a way to make it work. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Dominic, what's going on with the racing experts this week as you guys have a big week to cover, I imagine, here these next couple of days? We do. We amp up. We're going to have some great coverage with our team here on the Cup Series side, the Xfinity Series, the Truck Series, as well as IndyCar. So it's going to be a great weekend of motorsports coverage. Our team will continue to cover it. And it'd be nice to just watch along and just see what's going on in the sport. Tyler, I imagine you're going to be enjoying the race weekends with a nice cold beverage, if I had to guess. Yeah, yeah. Some, some Miller Lite, I guess, is what I need to have, apparently. But nonetheless, uh, I'll be enjoying it and uh, all over things. It's also my birthday this weekend. It's been birthday month here on the, uh, on the podcast. Dominic uh, had his birthday a few weeks ago. I'm turning the very old age of 25 this weekend. So, <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. That's what I'll be doing is uh, celebrating the birthday with Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm on a podcast with a 25 year old. <laughs> Dave, man, I, I, you know, I smelled carnation milk. I can, um, and now, now I know why I was smelling it. Man, you better stay away from that beer. <laughs> okay, so Miller Lights is no go now. All the time. Oh, exactly. oh, man, that's awesome, man. That's great. And, uh, and Dominic, you're also testing a race car too. 
Yeah, I'll be testing a race car at the Uranium Capital Speedway for the Hobby Stock Race. We'll be racing July. And you've 24th. never raced before. I've never raced before outside of go karts and sim racing. So to actually hop on a third of a mile clay oval track, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a big learning curve, but I got my fire suit, got my racing shoes, getting a Hans device order. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to hopping behind the wheel at the local short track. I'm either gonna crash and burn on lap one, or I'm gonna go out and kick some ass. So. I'll report back out. Well, Dominic, we hope you kick some ass because we got this podcast next week and we, we don't need you to crash and burn, okay? Uh, take Willie's advice from earlier. Be sharp and uh, do your thing, but don't don't crash and burn, man. <laughs> Will do. I appreciate the advice, guys. My, my bad is you're going to crash, but nonetheless. Well, thank you, Tal. I appreciate you having faith in me. Oh, hey, yeah. just let it come to you. There you go. There you go. Let it come Hear to that? you. There we go. It's like being in a nightclub. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they just come to you, right? You know you're going to win. Hey, man, I love having Willie on here. He just tells it like it is. Oh, <laughs> sound advice. I'm taking all this to heart. I'll let you all know how this goes by uh, next week. Awesome, on that note, we will run. Big thanks to uh, <laughs> Willie for joining us uh, here on Let's Go Racing this week. Reminder to subscribe to Let's Go Racing with David Starr. New podcast out each and every Wednesday on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, also on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Leave us a five-star review or don't leave us one at all. Hit that like button. We certainly appreciate that. Also on Twitter, at Star Podcast. Facebook, David Star Podcast. And by email, David Star Podcast at gmail.com. Yep. Put the checkered flag out on this edition of Let's Go Racing with David Star. For Willie, David, Dominic, and Tyler Jones, thanks so long. It's been another edition of Let's Go Racing. We'll see you next week.